Whoa! What is that? What is that? I have genuinely no idea what that is. Did they... is it a sea monster? Huge, hairy and faceless. The objects in these photos aren't like anything we can recognise. We've only explored 20% of Earth's oceans. So, are these mystery blobs just an undiscovered creature of the deep? Whatever that is. For centuries, unidentified creatures have been washing up on our coastlines. The first photographed case was in 1896. These bizarre things even have a name. Globster. Glob monster. A term that made waves in the 60s, when something unexplained washed up in Tasmania. This is Hobart. The island is famous for its apples, for its scallops and for its hops, and now it's got a monster on its hands. All over the world, people want to know what it is that's been found on the beach up on the west coast here. So in winter 1962, Stockman stumbled upon this giant blob covered in short fur, really terrible odour coming from it, no eyes. What was it? The first man with any scientific training who went there and who looked at it was Bruce Morrison of the CSIRO. In the cold light of a Hobart early morning, what is it? Uh, that I've always avoided saying. My main interest in it lies in the fact that I don't know what it is. Many people thought this could well be the discovery of a, a new species. It doesn't resemble any known living creature. None that we can think of, and we've also looked at some fossil records. It certainly looked fairly odd in the, in the photographs. So a lot of people from all over the world started writing to CSIRO and to the Tasmania Museum asking for more information about it. Using an electron microscope, the Tasmanian globster was later identified as whale collagen. Although some locals still refer to it as a monster. This has gone on for, for decades, uh, and I still talk to, to people that, that say, maybe the scientists have got it wrong, maybe there's a conspiracy theory, whatever. People still want there to be a monster, a sea monster out there to be discovered. Hey Vanessa, I'm going to send you some photos and I need you to help me figure out what the hell I'm looking at here. Okay, I love looking at these. Now, at first glance, I see something that's been weathered, been dead for a long time, and is probably not smelling too good if I was too close. But still, I don't see any features or any bones. So in this case, we really need to then go beyond the image and that's where genetics and DNA would be key to potentially identifying what this is. It doesn't seem like we're gonna solve this mystery today. So what about this one? It looks extraterrestrial. It does look like an alien. I mean, when you see this, it's got this protruding head-like shape. So it kind of looks like a brain, but it's not. What you can see here is a baleen whale. A what? A baleen whale, so a toothless whale, because I can see those really clear throat pleats which extend from the throat all the way down to the belly. It's an upside down whale, of course. It's the, the, the chin thing. You are staring directly at its stomach and its private parts. And if I zoom in here, we may have a female humpback whale. I can see two little dots on either end there, which indicate to me that this is most likely the mammary slits, or in other words, it's breasts. Another witness's photo confirms it's a baleen whale, specifically a humpback. It's a humpback whale and it's very bloated. After a whale dies, there's a lot of gases which build up inside their body and there's no exit point or at least their mouth or the bottom isn't working at this stage. So over time, they'll find an exit point for the gases to go out and the animal will deflate and, and will potentially float down to the bottom of the sea. A dead whale might seem like a bad omen, but it's good news for some. My other people have a, have a dream time story. We call it the sleeping whale. The ending of that whale dreaming is the whale went to sleep in this certain bay. And that certain bay is prime area where everybody wants to go to, the, you know, the oysters are massive. It's, it's like how science see it today. When the whales fall to the bottom of the ocean and they become part of that sea country and they give back to the country Whale falls can also help fight climate change. We know that they store a lot of carbon in their bodies. We're talking about an animal 40,000 kilograms, the size of a bus. 
that's a huge amount of carbon going down to the ocean. In terms of how it ranks, that's got to be up there. This is, this is next level. This is next level weird. Thanks for watching. Check out more weird and wonderful videos here. And if you like our stuff on ABC Science, then please subscribe. See ya.